Um, it's our great pleasure to have uh, Marco Calza here uh, from the Universidad de Coimbra. <laughs> Please excuse, my Portuguese is really bad. Um, and he will tell us about primordial black holes as laboratories for physics beyond the, beyond the standard scenarios. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, this project is done in collaboration with my supervisor, João Rosa, and with John Mac Russell in Oxford. So let me answer the question I hope you have. Beyond what? Beyond which standard scenario? So uh, beyond the standard model of particle physics in the sense that we would like to provide a new way to prove the total number of axion-like particles or in general light scalar with a mass smaller than a few mega electron volt throughout the spin distribution of primordial black hole that are today evaporating. On another side, beyond the vacuum solution of general relativity, in the sense that we want to provide a way to probe the beyond horizon structure of a, a solution which are not vacuum solution of general relativity, and this through the dynamic of the evaporation of black holes, so tracking the mass, the spin parameter, and the temperature of the black holes. So let me uh, introduce the ingredients for the recipe of the first part. Uh, there are axions, or in general, a scalar field. Axions are scalar field which enjoy a shift symmetry in four dimension. They have no mass from perturbative effect. Therefore, their mass uh, must be really small and can come only from non-perturbative effect. They come really copiously from string compatification. Their number can span from uh, 100 to 1,000 and 1,000. The other key component are primordial black hole, which are black holes from the early universe throughout the Rirac collapse of plasma over densities, and their mass can span several order of magnitudes. We are interested in the one having 10 to the 12 kilogram at the formation time, because they are the one that today are evaporating, showing changes in their spin parameter, if uh, in presence of many scalar, uh, light scalar particles. So, as we know uh, from the 70s, black hole evaporates, are thought to evaporate with an early thermal uh, uh, emission, I will not bother you with uh, all the calculation of quantum field in curved space time, but basically they evaporate uh, and uh, their uh, temperature is inversely proportional to the mass. So while they evaporate, their mass will shrink down, the temperature will raise, and they will be able to emit uh, more massive and massive uh, particle. <coughs> and uh, the particle of the emission of particle with a mass smaller than the temperature of the black hole will be exponentially suppressed. So a good approximation is to consider uh, a particle massless if its mass uh, is smaller than the temperature of the black hole, otherwise absent from the evaporating sample. Why axion-like particles are so important uh, and uh, give uh, a different result with respect, respect to the standard model particle? Because they are scalar and they are many co very copious and their leading emission mode is the spherical one. Therefore, they will raise the uh, spin parameter of the black hole while being emitted, because we'll drag away only m energy and matter from the black hole. So basically, the black hole will do like a, a dancer, which is spinning and taking the arm to, towards the chest. So let's come to some results. Uh, what you see here is called the Reggae plot. We have on the vertical axis the today spin uh, parameter of a black hole and the today mass of a black hole, which was 10 to the 12 uh, uh, kilogram at the formation time, at the beginning, uh, at a Big Bang time. And uh, in two very different scenarios, one nearly a streamal and one born at the percentage level. And we can draw the same conclusion for both of these plots. We can see that for 10 to the 11-ish kilogram, no residual spin would be present if the evaporation is taken uh, only considering the standard model particle, which is this black line here. And the number here is an addition of uh, uh, scalar uh, light fields. And as we can see, uh, even spotting one primordial black hole with a mass today of 10 to the 10 kilogram and a non-negligible uh, spin parameter is a uh, smoking gun of the presence of many axions during its evaporation. So why is it so interesting? Because for sure there exist uh, many cosmological and astrophysical effects that can probe a mass range for this light particle, but there is, doesn't exist a probe of the whole string axivers, so the, the, the whole number of uh, uh, light scalars present in the underlying theory of particle physics. And this uh, phenomenon cannot be mimicked by other processes, and so in this sense is a unique signature of the number of this particle. Then let's move to the other topic. Uh, so what's beyond GR, how to go beyond GR? And uh, here I, I will propose a toy model in which I take into account the simplest quantum field equation in course space time. And if one do open up this covariant derivative, you will see that the metric is highly involved in this equation. So, well, just take a metric, which is not a vacuum solution of general relativity, 
we took in consideration a care black bounce, which is a, uh, can describe a regular black hole or a wormhole depending on the value of this regularizing parameter, and uh, try to plot differences of the evolution of this, of this kind of black hole with respect to a care uh, solution. And what we found out if, is that if we take uh, the same mass first line or same temperature black hole and evolve them throughout their lifetime, we see that the evolution is really different. Here, uh, the solid line are the Kerr black hole, while the dashed line are the Kerr black bang solution. We can see two different asymptotic uh, uh, spin, two different time life, two different temperature for most of their evaporation, and the same picture can be drawn also for uh, two black holes having the same temperature at the beginning of their life. Uh, it is also possible to consider their primary scalar emissivity. Uh, it's a simple formula here. And uh, uh, the primary emissivity of scalar, it's uh, fairly uh, different in the two cases. Here in dashed line, we have the Kerr black hole, and in solid line, the Kerr black bounce. The shape is different, the intensity is different if uh, uh, taken uh, having the same mass. And if we consider two black holes having the same temperature, they will have uh, also two different profiles. So it is possible in this sense to analyze with the, uh, the emission, the Hawking evaporation the structure of the black hole itself. So the black hole structure will uh, uh, give differences in the horizon structure, which will give differences in the Hawking uh, uh, emission. So no information is coming from inside the event horizon, but in a certain sense, with this uh, uh, analysis, it is possible to look inside without looking inside. So all what I said up to now, it's in these two uh, references. And uh, with this, uh, I'm done. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, um, that's all for now. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Other questions for Marco? Maybe I start with the first one. Um, you had the plot where you had the spin parameter versus mass. Yeah, exactly. And then the different lines. So could you comment on what the different colors mean here? OK. Uh, each color corresponds to a different number of axion-like particles, or in general, light scalar, added to the standard model of particle physics. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so for example, if you see here, we have this little jump. This corresponds to the, to the pions entering in the, in the evolution of the black hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the numbers are just uh, the number of additional uh, scalar uh, particle taken into account uh, in the uh, evaporation uh, sample. All right, okay. okay. And they are taken into account since the beginning because 10 to the 12 uh, kilogram correspond to a temperature of more or less uh, uh, the order of uh, some mega electron volt. So we take into account light particles lighter than this scale. I see, okay, thanks. Um, and then I, I see one question. Um, I will let you go first. Hi, yeah, thanks. Um, so look at, just looking at this plot, what's the lifetime of the black holes that we're talking about here? Okay, uh, the lifetime uh, is, is chosen um, to, uh, to be 10 to the 12-ish uh, kilogram, and it's adjusted to be uh, one uh, universe time. So we took uh, the one that have the smallest uh, mass in order to have totally evaporated today, and then added an epsilon of mass uh, and recomputed all the evolution and see where the black hole is landing uh, here on this plot. So uh, we took into account uh, uh, black hole with a mass higher than 10 to the 12 uh, of uh, a very tiny bit in order to uh, not have uh, the total evaporation occur today and to have this plot. But since this epsilon is really small, you can regard this curve as a evolution of a single uh, black hole. And uh, if you do evolve a single black hole and try super, to superimpose the two curves, they will be basically the same curve, at least on this plot. So, so if I understand your response there correctly, you're adjusting for the fact that you're, you're multiplying the number of degrees of freedom you're evaporating to by, you know, 10 We start years. considering uh, just the degrees of freedom with uh, uh, a mass uh, smaller than uh, uh, the uh, mega electron volt scale, and then uh, at each scale adding uh, uh, the new particle into the evaporating sample. For example, here you can see 
the only hadrons entering in these samples are uh, the pion, uh, and uh, uh, they enter here and they are scalar. And so you can see here a, a small spike in this uh, green and uh, yellow curve, uh, and it's due to them. Then uh, when all the QCD degrees of freedom enter in the evaporinti sample, for example, here for this scale, which is roughly lambda QCD, uh, we have uh, a, a net decrease uh, in the spin parameter of the, uh, the primordial black hole because of uh, uh, the emission of non-scalar uh, particle. Thanks. Okay, yeah, there's one question by Katie. Thanks. Um, could you show the slide with this black bounce ansatz that you made for the non-vacuum space-time? So is, is the idea that you're just trying something that essentially you know, isn't, you know, isn't a black hole? Is this just a toy model, or is there some motivation for taking this specific Oh, model? That's just a toy model for, for two main reasons. One, we consider a massless uh, Klein-Gordon field mm. and not uh, the whole uh, uh, ensemble of fields which uh, we know that will emit if uh, and uh, we consider a Kerr black bound solution, uh, which is a solution, uh, not a vacuum solution of general relativity, mm. uh, and uh, it's a solution which regularizes with this parameter, mm. and uh, yes, it's a toy model in the sense also that this solution seems to regularize uh, the black hole, uh, introducing a, a throat uh, inside the horizon, violates, mm. for example, the null energy condition, mm. but it was just a probe to see uh, how far can we push it, and uh, is it possible to see which black hole is emitting with which uh, um, differences with respect to the standard one? Yeah, so it isn't the idea that, so here you know you would have some matter that would generate this space time, and as you said, you, you end up violating the null energy condition, which then means that you would have a negative energy density potentially. So it's not the idea that your axions are sort of sourcing this change in the curvature? Oh, no, we, we didn't introduce any matter source. Yeah. We just uh, introduced a metric which describes something uh, which inside the horizon, so I don't even know how can it be yeah. of interest of someone on the other side yeah. is via violating uh, a null energy condition and therefore all the other three. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, but I, yeah, I, it was just uh, a toy model because this solution uh, provides for, um, for a Tukowski equation, uh, in this case, which uh, is uh, well, uh, fairly easy to compute, and uh, it, it was uh, a metric that I found interesting because it allows to interplay between a care solution, black hole, and wormhole. Nice, okay, thanks. Thank you. Yep. A quick one. Since you don't know the field equations of the new gravitational theory, and you don't have the matter content, how do you know that the energy conditions are violated? This is just the solution of the new gravitational theory. You don't know the field equations. And you no, no, absolutely, but since, since it describes, okay, you, you, let's see if I understood your, your question. You say that since I don't know the theory which is generating this solution, I can't, okay, yes, I'm, I'm giving for granted a, a GR as a background theory when I say this, yes. Okay, we can agree on that, maybe. Okay, so I would suggest that we have further discussions over lunch and that we break here. So let's thank our speaker again for thank this you. wonderful talk.